morning. Mr. Bristow, please. Yes. Would you sign against your name, please? HP School of Motoring, good morning. Can I help you? Hello, Doris. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah, well, the traffic was very busy. Well, actually, I forgot the name bit as well. Oh, just a moment. Hang on. Okay, far away. Vi... Burnham. Yeah, one word, yeah, yeah. Up one? Oh. Populous by Burnham Populous. All right, love. Oh, I don't know, somewhere, I suppose. Yep. Why not? It's Monday. I don't pretend to like Mondays anyway. This morning, my secretary's away with a cold for the third or is it the fourth time this year? I've forgotten to pick up a plant for my wife, so I'll have to fit that into an already busy day. And to get it all off to a flying start, I've got to give a first driving lesson to a young man by the name of Bristow. Anthony Bristow. Now, I know this gentleman. I met him one weekend recently at my sister's. The following Friday, he was taking his driving test after half a dozen of what he persisted in calling lessons from a friend. Well, I ventured to suggest that perhaps six wasn't very many. Perhaps you ought to have had some lessons at a school where they had government-approved driving instructors. Oh, come off it, he said. I know your sort, he said. Keep them driving round and round the streets. Oh, no, sir, you're not ready yet, sir. Ding! Thank you very much, sir. So, he took his test. His failure was, of course, due entirely to extraordinary bad luck and a malicious set of coincidences. So now, he's got an impressive set of excuses. No good taking a test on a Friday. Examiners have got their full quota by then. That particular center, they don't really trust you if you're under 30, and if, in addition, you get the one they call Attila the Hun, you may as well put your money on a three-legged horse in a cancelled race. He's got all the old chestnuts. You'll hear them. Why burn them? Populous. I better go. So, why, after blowing a raspberry at schools, is he coming here? I don't know. Perhaps the penny's dropped. Morning. Morning, Mr. Bristow. How are you? Hey, you can get in. What's all this worth, then? New coat for the wife? Day trip to Boulogne? Very nice. No offence. Actually, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. I gather you failed your test very recently. Yeah, I cut a left-hand corner by about that much and I used my mirror insufficiently. <laughs> I don't know how he knew. He was scribbling on a piece of paper all the time. Anyway, let's face it. Who passes first time? Pretty girls and friends of the family, eh? Yes, well, I think to start with, I'd like you to drive just a little way so that I can watch you and get some idea of where we are. What, the test route? No, no. Uh, fasten your seatbelt. No, it's just not any good being competent with the test route. It changes anyway. Now, drive to the end of the road, turn right, OK? OK.
I must be honest with you and say I don't think you're ready to take the test. You are? If those few minutes were a fair guide. How do you mean? If how you've just driven is how you normally drive, is it? Well, yeah, I suppose. Why? Well, that's not really a high enough stand to get you through the test, I'm afraid. Well, what do they want? He's still in one piece. Do you know what they want? What? Do you know what they want? What they're looking for? How you're marked? What you're being tested for? It's not easy to pass an examination when you're not really sure what it is that you're being examined on, is it? Well, I always thought I was being tested to see if I could drive. But if you know something I don't... Drive, yeah, but how? Driving's driving. Well, driving's a number of things. You can drive well, or you can drive badly. <laughs> well, they're not testing me to see if I can drive badly, are they? On the other hand, they don't expect you to be a good driver. Pardon? That's right. On an L test, they want you to show that you're a safe driver. Experience is the only thing that'll make you into a good one. Now, the examiner's concern is that while you're getting that experience, you're safe on the roads. So, let's see if we can achieve just that, shall we? Now, this time, I want you to pull away from there, but under my instructions. So, make your checks. Start the engine. First gear. Not too much acceleration, and gently with the clutch. Now, look behind you. I just... Yep. I know, just to be absolutely sure. Indicate if necessary. Handbrake off. All the way off. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Yeah, I feel old on Mondays. I just wondered if I looked it. Got Mrs. Ellis at ten. Oh, then it will be by eleven o'clock. What next? Uh, Mr. Bristow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Young Bristow's a much improved character. Well, certainly as far as his driving goes, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, bad habits die hard, but die they do with perseverance. And you will, I hope, be aware that despite his stubbornly retained sarcasm, he now drives like someone who's beginning to know what he's doing. Right, I'm off. Bye. Oh, incidentally, your wife phone. Can you pick up half a dozen sheets of... Hello, HP School of Nursing. What was it about for? No, I'm sorry. About a second ago. Have you noticed the speed limit on this stretch of road? 40. Keep within it. That's it. Ah, how are you going to handle this? Is it clear far enough ahead? Yes. Don't forget the final glance in the mirror before you move on. Don't forget, check your mirror before you move back in left. Good. Good. talking to someone on Saturday. Fatal. Well, I mean, this would never have occurred to me, but it is reasonable when you think about it. What is? Well, these examiners. They sit there eight hours a day, five days a week, being driven around in other people's cars. I mean, if they can drive at all, they can only drive at weekends, can't they? 
and yet one of them's going to sit where you're sitting now and judge my driving. They sit there saying nothing, scribbling on bits of paper. I mean, who are they? What qualifications have they got to judge me on my driving? Have they got any? I don't know. All right, fair enough. Now, I've been to this place in Bedfordshire where the examiners are trained. Firstly, to be accepted for that course at all, you have, apart from anything else, to prove that you're a very good driver already. And I can tell you this, that even so, anyone who gets on it is going to have to put in a lot of hard work for at least four weeks to come up to the standard required to qualify. They're instructed during the day, and they work on their own in the evenings. They have to reach a very high standard of driving. They're taught, obviously, to conduct L tests. They have to know the manual, which is certainly the most authoritative document on driving that there is, back to front. They're lectured and examined, and constant checks are made on their progress. If they fall behind, they may be given extra time at the end of the course to make up what ground they've lost. But if they fail, they fail, and that's it. There are no second chances. Hello. By the time trainee examiners arrive here at the driving establishment, their applications have been vetted. They've appeared before a selection board and they've had a searching driving test lasting for about two hours. So, by normal standards, when they get here, they are very good drivers. But we raise the driving to a modern, consistently fault-free standard before we teach them how to assess other people's driving. Unless we do this, they will not be able to recognize what is or isn't a fault when they conduct tests. Their training is very intense and requires a fair amount of evening study. But the emphasis is on the practical. Most of the time is spent in cars, lots of cars. We make them change cars daily, sometimes twice a day, so that they experience the makes, types and sizes that they are likely to encounter. This first part of the training is very tough, but it does ensure that driving examiners are thoroughly expert drivers. At the beginning of the course, each trainee is put in a car with a qualified examiner and asked simply to drive for about 25 miles while the instructor sits beside him and assesses his driving. The trainee sees a report on that drive which the instructor makes out. In fact, a report is made out on every day of the trainee's work at the establishment, and every day the trainee sees it. So he knows his faults, he knows what has to be worked on. If a trainee's not so good at urban driving, for example, then he'll spend the greater part of his driver training doing right, that. The driver on the left, very indecisive. All right, may suddenly do a U-turn. You must consider under these circumstances the horn. Another trainee may need extra instruction on motorway driving. You see the cars? We are now in the correct lane, you see, to allow the vehicles on the left to join the motor. And again, the daily report is made on his progress. Each trainee keeps the same instructor all the time, except when regular practical progress checks are made, when an instructor unfamiliar to him will be used. This is to make sure that as far as possible, the establishment maintains an objective running assessment of the trainee's progress. I didn't think they could teach me much, because I've uh, driven in Europe and driven in the States and driven all kinds of vehicles, and I thought, well, there's not much more to learn. But uh, it was rather a nasty shock in the first few days because they tore my driving apart. Well, I, I didn't expect as hard work as I got in the long hours. I mean, we spent lots and lots of nights sitting on beds studying for the next day's work and the tests that we got. So I naturally thought I'd been driving all that time and a good driving instructor. I thought that would be good grounding for me. Yeah. But in fact, it didn't help a bit because uh, they want you right back to where they start. But I had to forget all my driving over the years and start relearning their way. Were well, you quite confident of your driving when you first came? I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you continue to think that? About a day and a half. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do to you? How does this come about? To... Well, nothing, purely simply the fact that you're here to be taught. You're not here to teach anyone else. You're here to be taught. And it's very hard. You come with an open mind saying, well, I, I'm going to get taught. And you go along and you think, I've got no mind on this. But your mind closes within about five minutes. So, you know, you say, no, I, I, I'll, I'll do what they tell me. And then when I get home, I'll drive the way I want to. But no, the point's proved very quickly. What about the, the, the instructors? More marvellous chaps, you know. They're really good as a way to help you. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. They're good. They will teach you to recognize the basic safe standard that you will be looking for in learner drivers. It is absolutely essential 
that you as driving examiners assess your candidates against a reasonable standard. You cannot expect L drivers to drive to the standard that you drive to with your experience and the rigorous training that you've had here. But you cannot pass anyone who is dangerous. On the other hand, you must pass people who are not. So what is a driving examiner's job? All right, he examines the driving of people taking L tests, but what's he looking for? Here, a qualified examiner plays the part of a learner driver taking his L test, and two trainees go with him to act as his examiners. Good morning, Mr. Reeves. Good morning. Would you sign against your name, please? Yes, no, certainly. Just there. Thank you. Will you lead the way to your vehicle, please? Yes. Have you any physical disability that isn't declared on your application form? Oh, I'm quite fit, thank you. Which is your vehicle? It's the Brown Avenger on the car park. Thank you. Will you read the number of the car immediately ahead of you, please? That's uh, CYO446V. Thank you. At the end of the road, turn left, right? Now, which way do you want me to turn, left or right? Now, that wasn't oh. correct, was it? Now, it should be, at the end of the road, turn left, please. Let's try it again. At the end of the road, turn left, please. During the course of the test drive that follows, the instructor will simulate a number of driving errors. The trainee examiners are expected to assess each of these errors and record their assessment on a marking sheet. Take the next road on the right. I'd like you to turn your car around to face the opposite way using your forward and reverse gears. Try not to touch the curb when you're turning. At a convenient point, the instructor opens up a discussion with the trainees on their assessments of the faults simulated so far. Well, again, I thought that you had mounted the pavement and lost control. And lost control of the vehicle, actually yes. going onto the pavement, I see. Mm. And I see that you have recorded this situation as a minor situation, mm. why is that? Well, I felt that you misjudged the reverse, but uh, I thought that you only touched the kerb, so I marked it as a minor fault. <laughs> well, once again, this is the correct situation here, the correct assessment as a minor situation, and this one is much too harsh. This is the marking sheet the driving examiner uses, and on which he records his assessment of the candidate's driving. This indicates a junction, right turn, control when moving off, Emergency stop. Control when reversing. A mistake such as this hill start would be assessed as a minor fault and a diagonal mark like this entered on the sheet. Don't get worried by them. You can have any number of minor faults on your test and still pass. Cutting across traffic like this was judged to have been a minor fault. Had the oncoming traffic been much closer, however, and the incident judged potentially dangerous, then a cross would have appeared on the form. Just one of these means a failure, which is, after all, fair enough, because you would have failed to prove by that piece of misjudgment that you are yet safe to drive on your own. Could you pull up on the left at a convenient place, please?
the only other time we have is 3.30 on Thursday. How's that? Okay, fine. Lovely. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye. Hello. Hello. Well? Dick, you're a Turkish. Bristow passed. Oh, good. He's nice, really. Yeah, he let himself down a bit, though. Oh. Well, he actually looked pleased about it. I'm sure that was a mistake. What about Mrs. Ellis? <sighs> Let's face it. There'll always be the Mrs. Ellis's and the Mr. Ellis's. But generally speaking, if you've had good tuition for the length of time that you personally needed, if you've responded well to that tuition, if you know what the L test is all about and what they're looking for, then there's absolutely no reason at all to suppose that you won't pass first time. The examiner's are not a specially bred race of ogres, and the L test itself is not a lottery, which is what some people, usually those that have recently failed, would have you believe. Oh, uh, get me this number, will you, please, Lump? No, it really is just about as fair as you can get. So if you're taking one soon, remember what I said, and good luck. It's ringing for you. Come. Ah, hello. Um, look, uh, this may seem a strange request to you, but my wife... Uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's just that she's taken up origami. <laughs> origami.